Hi everyone. It is February. February 2023. Unbelievable already. Yeah. And uh, we're here in a snow that you might be able to pick up. Yeah, beautiful snowfall that's supposed to last for uh, several days with temperatures mild now and plummeting precipitously in the next yeah. 24 hours. So we're gonna be below zero before long. Yep, and so this is a way maybe i'll check with the conservation scientist here that the earth takes care of itself um all of these extreme weather events and all of this difference in in temperatures we've been experiencing extreme differences this winter season yeah um, this was not quite as extreme as the last but it promises to be weird so here we are is that the way the earth loves itself well, yeah, we thought we'd talk a little bit about love, affinity, kinship, relational mm, attraction. It's February. Right. It's, it's Valentine's. But is it? Month. What do you think? Is well, it the way the earth you know the, itself to self-correct? You can stand here and see this snow falling, and you know that snow is insulating the ground underneath, and that's allowing certain life forms to exist where if the ground was bare and subject to deeper freezing, uh, it couldn't. Um, and of course we're building up moisture which in the era of uh, intense wildfires is is very significant 60 percent of uh, the fresh water in the inner mountain west where we are and it goes all the way south to new mexico uh, comes from uh streams and rivers and most of those are fed essentially by snow melt so um this is this is part of a lot of love going on and so the thing that we have been thinking about love is certainly the love that we associate with I don't know, Valentine's, and even though Valentine wasn't all that great a person as it turns out, but we don't need to go there. Um, it, it's, it's something that is bigger, that holds all of the love. And so that's what we wanted to consider. You all have a sense of this from your experiences in the natural world. And then you have other experiences too, like the first thing time you see a new baby, or you're looking into a baby's eyes who's brand new to the world. There are all these experiences of the big love, this completely unconditional and ever-present um, love that is just here for us out in the world. Yeah, and, and it's interesting to look at affinity across species, too. That's a kind of love, you know, us with our dogs or cats. What about even the oxpecker birds that live on the backs of rhinos and zebras and, uh. and you know, pick <laughs> off the ticks and keep them, not only do that, but then whenever there's danger, such as lions nearby, those birds will rise up and start squawking to alert the, the ungulates, the zebras, whatever it happens to be, that there's danger nearby. And the olive baboons helping out the elephants by alerting them to danger in exchange for access to the elephant digging water holes uh, during drought. So. Th th you know, it's, it is cooperation. Is it love? I don't know. And I wanted to ask uh, or bring up something about mammals, too. You know, since we're talking about love, and some of it you may not be convinced is love, but what about a, um, the, the matriarchal alpha female wolf of, uh, of Yellowstone who, on losing her partner of many years, just left the pack, which is behavior none of the biologists had ever seen, and wandered on her own for uh, a good week before returning. And what about the elephants who go back and visit the sites of the bones of uh, beloved herd members who have died? Or Talik with a whale. Talik with a whale. Yeah. The, right, that pushed uh, her dead calf for over uh, a thousand miles up the coast, not wanting to let it go. That would seem to be uh, identifiable as some kind of deep love because can't you measure? the depth of the lost by vir of what was lost by virtue of how much affection and love there was. Yeah, and, and that's a, a curious thing because we have these frontal lobes and because we have this habit of the way, hab these habits of the ways we've organized our own knowledge, we want to measure, to verify. And when it comes down to it, just that word is our construction. It's mm -hmm. our construct. We came up with this. But it's an attempt to name something that's so much bigger than the word itself can, can hold. But the word can hold that. That's what's kind of mystical and poetic about yeah. it, is that the word doesn't have to be limited to some kind of measurement or some time, kind of empirical evidence that humans might look for to, to demonstrate it. Um, this thing that we call love 
between people sometimes reduces itself to dependency or to convenience or to, to things that really don't have to do with this heart opening, big, have less to do with that. They may be related, they may come out of that. And, and there's nothing wrong with those things, with the dependence and with the, the convenience. There is nothing wrong with that. Um, and yet, the invitation of this month and of this time, you know, and we made this up too, that February is the month of love. I don't know why, because mm, we need to do something with this month. That's right. And so, but it's cool, so all right, we'll do it. And, and this whole thing just feels lovely. Yeah, I think for me, a broad definition of love is that which calls you into greater relationship. Whether it's with, with yourself, yeah, as with well. yourself, uh -huh. yeah, with other people, with other life forms, with plants, um, th there is an underlying sense of uh, relationality uh, for me when when we talk about about love. Yeah, and with all the the beings that we're surrounded by. Yeah, thank you. That I like that. And even you know, it's interesting. Our bodies, as all organisms, evolved over all these millions of years from. It's sort of simple standalone life forms that ended up getting together because they could accomplish more as a unit than they could individually and that happened over and over and over and over again until we got to multi-cell organisms and and so forth and so now we've got these these living tributes to uh, cooperation and affinity and bonding so maybe we're just love quite physically right we are in form huh love that <laughs> um the thing about um survival and love um you are probably all familiar with abraham maslow's hierarchy of needs and low on in this um triangle the first level is for food and shelter um and and just to take care of the bodily form and keep it going and but shortly above that is the need for belonging and this need for belonging is one that is the expression of wishing to be, or of the impulse to be loved and to find a place and a way to be loved. All of us have that impulse. Um, and here's the deal for us all to check out. To what extent are we never without love as long as our planet is viable? This planet and its phenomena that keep us alive and keep itself alive, it serves itself. That's what we were talking about first. Yeah. All these corrections that are that the planet is making in the face of, of climate changes that have been largely human caused. So what does the planet do? It figures out how to accommodate. And maybe the, the humans get to come along, we're gonna yeah. see. But I, in, in some ways we could, we could argue that it's today, that it's a matter of love. Just how in love are we? How in love are we with this natural world? Yeah, we're standing here uh, benefiting from all these phytoncides and positive chemicals that influence our physiology coming off these spruce trees. Um, I love them back for that, uh, besides that, for their beauty, for their scent. Um, so again, we're really talking about celebrating um, relationships and, and sort of um, a kind of positive dependency, interdependent, yeah. uh, is, is really what we're talking about. And, yeah. and I think that love embraces that concept of interdependence. I have a friend named Kwong Kim. There's a book I wrote that has, it's a hundred voices, Americans talk about change, longer story, but he's the hundredth voice. And I think it may have been, uh, certainly before that, maybe, maybe a part is that, of that interview as well. He had, has great extensive practice as a t Tibetan Buddhist. And he likes to refer to what Gary just talk about, talked about as divine codependence. Mm, I like that. And it's so amazing how we take these words and we make them just bad. But yeah. but he took it and said, yes, it's this co and, and maybe yeah, codependence even works because it's so healthy because the natural world is not going to get weird about it. Right, right. So but certainly interdependence, divine dependence. Yeah. Um and so I like that's that. yeah, 
That's and even the, you know, we talked too about the, the, the term compliance, which, ooh, gosh, that sets people off. They, we don't, as a culture, I think in America especially, we don't like to think of ourselves as compliant. That seems like we're, you know, being manipulated and abused. But <laughs> there is a compliance in the, in the world, in the natural world, and we humans too are compliant with what we can and can't do as far as exceeding the possibilities of the life-giving forces on this planet. And we're running up uh, against some, some very dangerous edges right now with that. So maybe love has a kind of compliance in, in some ways. I wish there was another and another word. An and interdependence. And interdependence. Yeah. yeah. So again, I mean, this is one more thing, and then we probably ought to wrap it up okay. for this right. month. But, but that is... Uh, kind of a call to all of us to actually balance the masculine and feminine mm. in that love within each of us regardless of your the gender assigned at birth regardless of the gender that you choose to identify with or no gender at all within you because you are a part of this culture there is this more um, we've used more agentic and more relational sides and our culture has organized itself around being Compliant. I'm not going to be compliant because mm -mm, I'm agentic. I'm going to be because I'm independent. <laughs> yes, independent. You know, so yeah. this this right. um right. the separation myth that we talk about so much. The the antidote to the separation myth is actually the truth, and that's what we're inviting all of us into visiting and visiting in this better balance between what's agentic, which is not a problem, but in balance with what's relational, so that the agency doesn't drive. The relational is the one that says, ah, oh, yes, this is for love. This is what we're doing for love. So, wow, sounds good. So yeah. we look forward to uh, being with you on the next deep dive, which appropriately enough... Oh, is happening on... Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Valentine's Day. <laughs> Six, Six o'clock on Valentine's Day. Come spend an hour with us, diving a little deeper into what the natural world has to teach us about love. Yeah, we're looking forward to it and to hear your thoughts uh, about it as well. So also, we got to tell you, things have changed. We've had some interaction with the ranch where we have our, our retreats, and both of the retreats are coming down in cost. So if that early, the earlier information has been prohibitive, stay tuned because yeah. we're going to be putting that information out, and we really look forward to having, uh, we're so excited to be able to bring the... Yeah. The, then, so those are in... Um, in June around the solstice one of them is the 20th I'm not going to do it correctly 20th to the 24th the other is the 26th to the 30th I think and one of them is focused on full ecology who are you now with all of this that's been going on in our lives in the past four years um, the other one is focused on writers writers yeah a lot of a very limited group probably 10 people uh, at most, one-on-one um, -on -one time, careful craft workshops, and at the same time, afternoons with us out in the Centennial Valley, which if you've never been there, and I've been in Montana 35 years, and it is to me one of the most beautiful spots in the entire state. And so just for the sake of waking up every morning and watching trumpeter swans float down the river in front of your cabin, and on and on and on. Uh, this is a special, special place. And remember, for the writers among you, you're always writing. And so all of these experiences count. Yeah. All right, so those things also, if you haven't yet, sign up for our newsletter at www.fullecology.com and connect with us yeah. by email at connect at fullecology.com. And you can also see a little bit about those workshops Mary was talking about at fullecology.com. You'll, you'll find the, the links to, the to uh, get to, to uh, descriptions of those. For the retreats, yeah. The yeah. Retreats. Okay, everybody. All right. Happy February. Happy February. Yes. Take care. Feel the love. Yeah. <laughs> see Bye. you soon.